Nights can last 24 hours here. Streets have no names, and some say there are more polar bears than humans. Cats are also banned, and if you manage to get here, you'll be expected to take off your shoes when entering a restaurant or a museum. Svalbard is a group of Norwegian islands that lies in the chilling depths of the Arctic, and it's one of the closest places to the North Pole people can live in. Visiting needs a lot of planning in advance. You'll need a visa, clothes for extremely cold weather, and an experienced local expert to guide through the wilderness. Why no cats? Because they're considered an invasive species that can damage delicate wildlife, especially the birds, which have no idea how to fend for themselves against furry felines. There are no names for streets, only numbers. This was the custom way back when the region was filled with miners, and they wanted to keep things simple. You might see slippers being offered when you enter an establishment for people who want to take off their shoes. This is also based on an old practice when locals took off their dirty outdoor shoes to avoid making a mess inside. These islands are also home to the impenetrable Global Seed Vault. The construction needs to be kept in pristine conditions, since it's home to around 1 million plant seed samples in case something bad ever happens to our planet and we need to rebuild our natural habitat. The plant vault was constructed deep within a mountain and over 400 feet above sea level. It's also built to withstand very strong earthquakes. There are no visitors allowed inside, but some guided tours take people very close to its gates. Once you reach this island in the South Pacific, you can claim a piece of land and start building your dream home. It's called Pitcairn, and last they checked, it hosted less than 50 permanent residents. The weather stays tropical all year round, and the landscape is breathtaking, but it's a pain getting there. Say you're departing from Los Angeles, you'll first need to take a flight to Tahiti. Then board another flight to the island of Managriva, which only departs once a week. Here you'll reach the closest airport to Pitcairn, which is still 330 miles away from the shore. The rest of the adventure needs to be completed by boat but it will take you more than 30 hours. That's only if you're lucky enough to embark in the first place, since the boat journeys to the island with supplies a mere once every three months. There's not a lot of things to do for such long travel times. Only four families live on the island, and there's a single cafe and one art gallery. You might be able to book a stay in a former prison though. Locals first figured out they needed a prison in 2004 but it soon became unused, so now it also doubles as a hostel. Underneath the Bank of England, there's its mysterious Gold Vault, a fortress that's notoriously hard to explore, for good reason. It's said to house around 400,000 gold bars, valued at around $250 billion. There are many layers of defense on this place. Complex tech surveillance, heavy doors weighing over three tons, guards that are on alert 24-7, and the very few people authorized to reach past the gates use things like voice recognition to unlock. The official story back in the 1800s was that the bank had such a good defense that it could never be robbed. There is a rumor though that bank officials started getting anonymous letters claiming someone managed to pierce its walls. They shrugged it off until they met face to face with the culprit, a sneaky sewage worker. He slid out from under the floor of the vault, claiming he'd made his way in after discovering an old drain during repairs. An honest man, the sewage worker never touched a dime. To his surprise, he wasn't punished for breaking in. Legend has it he was rewarded with the equivalent of around $100,000 for discovering the security breach. This perky building is called the Tridongar Lighthouse, and it can be found in Chile, Iceland. This compact construction is perched on the highest of three rocky spots in a tiny cluster. Waves constantly crash against the cliff, which means it's not reachable by boat. The only way to get there these days is via helicopter. It's not open for tourists, but there are many nearby helicopter-guided tours that explore its surroundings. 
Constructing this sturdy building back in 1939 was tremendously complicated. The builders had to manually lay the foundation and climb nearby cliffs to hit the pinnacle. The tough weather with its freezing rain and rough winds made it even more difficult. Those slippery rocks also posed a risk. A slip, and builders would end directly in the chilly North Atlantic. The construction crew also had to use their mountaineering skills. Finishing the lighthouse meant they had to improvise with a human pyramid. One person on its knees, another on top, and a third on top of them. Point Nemo translates to the point with no man. It's the location in the ocean that's furthest away from any piece of land, over 1,600 miles away. It's a sad zone when it comes to wildlife too. This area in the South Pacific Ocean is vast, about 34 times the size of France, but marine life can't thrive here because of the lazy ocean currents. They can't bring enough nutrients for bigger sea creatures to survive. Scientists were only able to see some bacteria and small crabs in those volcanic vents at the seafloor. Point Nemo was first pinpointed in 1992, but it hasn't been explored much since. Sailors aren't even the closest people to Point Nemo. They're the astronauts that cruise above it in the International Space Station. Because it's mostly barren, astronauts have often used it in their exploration projects. When spacecrafts are ready to retire, this is where they're laid to rest. It's the best place to avoid land damage by having devices plunge into the Pacific. Over the years, Point Nemo's become a resting place for all sorts of space machines, over 250 of them. In 1997, Point Nemo also became the source of an unusual sound heard by marine scientists called the bloop. While people were initially excited to link the weird noise with some undiscovered and dangerous ocean creature, it was soon learned that the sound was made by an ice quake underwater. Can people go through Point Nemo? Not anytime soon. The exact location of this spot was calculated using special software to solve the challenge of the longest swim. The goal was to show the spot in the global ocean where, if someone falls off a ship, they'd be the farthest from any land in every direction. It's possible that no one has passed through these exact coordinates at all. No commercial or touristic ships are known to pass through. The Hron Sea Abyss is located in the Czech Republic, and it's the deepest flooded pit cave in the world, measuring over 1,700 feet. Scientists have yet to identify how far it reaches into the ground. It also didn't form as most pits do, from the surface of the Earth making way down. This one made its way up due to lukewarm mineral water filled with carbon dioxide. This fizzy concoction emerged from deep within the ground and chiseled away at the limestone. At some point in its history, the ceiling gave in, unveiling this huge hole to the world. It's not just the depth that makes it difficult to explore, it's the liquid itself. It can cause problems since it has a high carbon dioxide content, enough to tickle a diver's exposed parts. This water's unique blend even influences the type of gear one can wear. Opt for open circuit scuba and the exhaled bubbles set off a chemical reaction. The result means less visibility in a place with low light conditions. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.